I'm Jason Scorza, Associate Provost for Global Learning at Fairleigh Dickinson University, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you here tonight uh, to the first of our 2008-2009 UN Pathways Lecture Series. Uh, it is my great pleasure and honor uh, to momentarily introduce you to your host for tonight, uh, Ambassador Ahmad Kamal, who is a great friend of the university. Uh, before I do that, I would like to um, just lay out the ground rules for you. Uh, we are going to be recording this event, so I would ask that you please silence your cell phones uh, and other electronic devices. Um, the evening will start uh, with a lecture. Uh, then we will have time for uh, questions and answers. And I would ask that if you have a question for our guest, that you would step down the aisle and stand at the microphone and speak directly into the microphone. Uh, that's the only way we'll be able to hear you and the only way we'll be able to uh, record your questions. So, on with the business. Uh, Ambassador Ahmad Kamal has been a friend of the university for many years. In addition to serving as a member of our Board of Trustees, he is the president of the United Nations Ambassadors Club, which, uh, in association with which we host these lectures. Uh, he is the former foreign minister and former permanent representative of Pakistan to the United Nations. And it is my great honor to welcome him, uh, Dr. Uh, Ambassador. Thank you, sir. Mr. Provost, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's uh, a great pleasure and, in fact, an honor for me to introduce uh, Minister Obishakin to you. Written Obisakin, but pronounced Obishakin. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure because this is a person who has so much versatility to him that it, uh, it amazes you. To begin with, he looks 18 years old, and I always thought he was 18 years old, and I have, to my misfortune, always treated him like an 18-year-old until I happened to be his chauffeur today driving him to, uh, to Fairleigh Dickinson. And he told me that he has 28 years service to his credit in the foreign service of, of uh, uh, Nigeria. So I asked him, how old are you? Did you start at the age of two or? <laughs> and uh, uh, he gave me what he said is his age, and I still don't believe it. And I keep looking at him because it sounds to me like propaganda, or even worse, Indi Indian propaganda, which is the worst type of propaganda <laughs> that you can come across. <laughs> but this amazing young-looking person, uh, first of all, I thought he was a diplomat. But he turns out, first of all, to be a pastor. How does a diplomat be a pastor? I can't understand, but throughout the trip to from New York, from the UN to here, there were people telephoning him, asking him to come and baptize their twins, uh, and making sure that he'd be there to perform a marriage and things like that. So obviously, this is a man of hidden virtues, which I have discovered only because I happen to be driving him today. Then. I find that he has a knowledge of languages, which is amazing. I always prided myself on my knowledge of languages. And in fact, the joke in the UN is that you don't ask Ambassador Kamal how many languages he can speak in. You ask him how many languages can he be silent in? <laughs> and the answer is none. <laughs> Here is a person who is fluent in French, fluent in Portuguese, learning Arabic, learning Chinese, has been the official interpreter of the president of Nigeria. And therefore, and I hope you know what an interpreter is, an, an interpreter to the president is a person who is not just an interpreter, because you are normally interpreting a lot of very highly confidential and secret talks. So the interpreter to the president is a person of great confidence and maturity and knowledge. And he has been 
the interpreter to the president of Nigeria. And then I find that he was the chef de cabinet to three foreign ministers from three totally different regimes, which means that he has political survivability uh, in addition. So there's a bit of Colin Powell to him. Uh, he looks like Colin Powell also. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> he tells me that he's trying to blush, and I, that I'd like to see. <laughs> But uh, this is, uh, and then in the conversation, I mean, this, this is a person whom I have known, and I've truly discovered him, and he, he's like a Persian carpet. You look at it, and you discover new things about it every day. There's always something new that you see in a Persian carpet. You never get to the bottom of it. And I discovered that he's also an author of several books and that he's writing books on a wide variety of subjects which have nothing to do. His latest book, the one that he's working on, is a compilation of proverbs and the role that proverbs play in intercultural relationship and diplomacy. Now that's an unusual subject for a young 18-year-old <laughs> to be handling. And so, it gives me pleasure and humility to be uh, in, in the position to introduce a person of versatility for whom my respect is unadulterated and growing by the minute, by the second, all the time. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much. Well, I hope I won't disappoint Ambazo Kamal. <laughs> well, Nigeria, its role in Africa and in the world. On behalf of Professor Ujoy Ogu, who is the ambassador and permanent representative of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the United Nations, who is unavoidably absent today as a result of the duties at the United Nations. She is currently the chairperson of the second committee of the United Nations, a very, very busy committee. I wish to express deep appreciation for the invitation given to me to give this lecture. I want to show appreciation to Ambassador Kamal, who has flattered me so much, who is the president of the United Nations Ambassadors Club, the University Provost, uh, Joseph Kiernan, Dr. Jason Skortza, the Associate Provost of the Office of the Global Learning and all their collaborators. I want to thank Joe and all the people, uh, professors here present, scholars, students, and my colleague. I'm also a student. I learn every day. Soglon says, uh, and he says, by learning daily, I grow up. The topic is Nigeria, its role in Africa and in the world. For a plural society such as Nigeria, consensus is not easily achieved amongst the countries foreign policy allies about the range or depth of Nigeria's involvement in global affairs. While a strong and consistent majority supports Nigeria's active engagement internationally, a few Nigerians advocate a more isolationist stance on international affairs and they, therefore, will wish more concentration on the domestic matters for the country. This is normal in a country with 150 million 